Hi there everybody. In this video we're looking at homeostasis, particularly in relation to temperature control. Okay, so if we're looking at homeostasis then, what we mean by homeostasis is the way that um, our internal environment is maintained at a constant level. So that maintenance of a constant internal environment. And that's done so that cells in the body are able to function effectively. So negative feedback is a mechanism that helps to maintain homeostatic balance, that helps to keep these factors within narrow limits. So if we have a look at how that works, let's take an example. So this is not a temperature example, this is a different example. Let's say that um, we've got, uh, this is a blood capillary, but what we're seeing here is the water content of the blood. So something happens to increase the water content of the blood. Now there are going to be receptors in the blood capillaries and those receptors will detect that increase. So when they detect that increase, which means that that factor has moved away from that set limit that the body wants to try and keep, that means that the receptor sends impulses to the control centre, which is usually the brain or it could be the spinal cord. The control centre, when it receives those impulses, will then send more impulses to the effector, and the effector is a muscle, or it could be a gland. And that effector will then, um, if it's a muscle, it will contract, if it's a gland, it will release a hormone, um, and the effect of that will be to then cause that factor, which had increased, to decrease again. So this whole cycle here this is describing uh, negative feedback because a factor has increased and then the control centre causes something to happen which then decreases the factor. If this factor here decreased further, then impulses would be sent to tell the control centre that it's decreased too much. So the control centre would then send impulses to the effector to tell, uh, to tell it to increase whatever that factor is. So that's how negative feedback works. So we could look at it as a graph. So if we say that we've got this factor and this is the level that the body wants to keep that factor at, but it's then got sort of tolerance limits. So it could go here and that's okay. And it could go down here. So as long as the factor stays within this region, then cells are able to function effectively. So if a factor increases above the set limit, then something will happen as a result of the receptor sending impulses to the control centre and then sending impulses to the effector, which will cause it to decrease again. But when it decreases, it will nearly always drop below the set limit, at which point the receptor sends impulses to the control centre to say that, which then causes the effector to do something to bring it back up. So this is how homeostasis is maintained, this negative feedback. The factor goes up, something brings it down. The factor goes down, something brings it back up. So it's always fluctuating about the set limit. If we look at an example then with temperature control in more detail, in the brain is where the uh, hypothalamus is located. So here's the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is where the thermoreceptors are. So the hypothalamus is basically the temperature control center um, in the body. So the hypothalamus, firstly, it can detect from the skin temperature receptors. So here we've got thermoreceptors in the skin and they're detecting the external temperature. So those receptors in the skin will send impulses to the hypothalamus in the brain um, if the temperature, the external temperature increases or decreases. The hypothalamus itself has is thermoreceptors which detect the temperature of the blood. So there are blood vessels which are flowing through the brain, through the hypothalamus, and the thermoreceptors there detect the temperature of the blood flowing through the hypothalamus. So the receptors are there and then it will just be detecting the uh, and sending impulses almost to itself. So the hypothalamus is receiving internal temperature information and external in temperature information. And as a result, it will send impulses to various effects in the body 
to bring about various corrective mechanisms or corrective actions. So first thing that it might do, if the temperature has decreased, then vasoconstriction. So if the temperature is decreased, we want to uh, reduce the amount of heat that's lost from the body. So the hypothalamus sends uh, impulses to the effector in the blood vessels, causing vasoconstriction so the blood does not flow through the surface capillaries. Second thing might happen is that impulses are sent to effectors in the muscles of the skin, uh, the muscles that control the hairs, um, causing the hairs to stand up, trapping a layer of air and reducing heat loss. Impulses could be sent uh, to the muscles of the body which cause shivering. So by shivering our muscles are contracting rapidly and that generates heat to warm us up. We might also send impulses to reduce sweat production. And then the final thing that can happen is that the hypothalamus can send impulses to the adrenal gland to release the hormone adrenaline. And adrenaline release increases the liver metabolism, which increases the amount of heat that the liver generates when the metabolic rate is increased. Now, adrenaline will be released if there's a fairly rapid decrease in the body temperature. If there's a more uh, gradual decrease in temperature, in a decrease in the environmental temperature, so for example, um, in countries which have uh, a winter season, as it gets colder, the external environment, then the hypothalamus releases uh, a different hormone called TSH. And what TSH does is it stimulates the thyroid gland and tells the thyroid gland to then release a hormone called thyroxine. And thyroxine also acts on the liver to increase the metabolic rate. But this is something which would be more long term. That would only stop when the external temperature starts to increase again, so as we start moving out of winter and towards spring and summer. So what we can see here, all of these mechanisms are to do with uh, what happens if the body detects that temperature has decreased, so the body is trying to retain heat. If body temperature then uh, increases too much, then the opposite thing would happen. So the receptors would detect that temperature has increased, and that could be the receptors of the hypothalamus detecting the temperature of the blood. Maybe the external temperature also increases, and so sweat production would begin. Skeletal muscles would stop contracting, no shivering. Vaso um, constriction would stop, and we might see vasodilation. Hairs would lie flat and the liver's metabolic rate would slow down again. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you.